God is getting you ready for something bigger than yourself. He likes you to believe that other people can have their breakthrough, but you will not have your breakthrough. I come to prophesy the devil is a liar. God said that you are the head and not the tail. I come to prophesy the devil is a liar. When men mock you, God is celebrating you. When men scorn you, God is lifting you up. God is raising you up. God is celebrating you. God is good, amen. And Jesus is our focus. It's good to be here again, and it's good that Apostle has some rest now, <laughs> and he will have a blessed time with his wife. I saw also already some pictures. Can we stand on our feet? I just want you to focus on Jesus for a moment, and just let's pray for like, like a minute, and just express him your love. And express him the desires of your heart. Just lift up your voice. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Thank you, Father. Let your kingdom come and expand here on earth. Thank you, Jesus, that you touch the hearts of the people. That there's change coming. There's change coming. Change coming. In the name of Jesus, you are the King of kings. You're the Lord of glory. Jesus, 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 you're so lovely. Thank you that you sit at the right hand of the Father. Thank you that you open our hearts, our spirit and our minds, so that we can receive this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may sit down. You know, I was praying this week for the word, what God wanted to share with you this morning. And it was not easy. <laughs> Sometimes it's a struggle that you have before God can release something. Can you follow me? But if you keep on pushing, say keep on pushing. If you keep on pushing, the breakthrough will come. There cannot be a denial. There cannot be withheld. If you keep on pushing, it will come. Can, uh, please look at your neighbor and tell them, it will come. Just keep on pushing. Say it again. Just keep on pushing. It will come. You know, there's something about what we are doing and where we're standing in faith. Because the place where you're at is the place where God brought you to. You know, sometimes, yeah, you can say there's different nations here. I'm from Jamaica, I'm from the Netherlands, I'm from Belgium, I'm from Canada, I'm from Russia or Germany. It does not matter. You were born there, but you came from heaven. Say, I came from heaven. The only struggle we have is connecting back to the one where he came from. That's a struggle, right? And it has to do because, you know, we came, we are spirits. You know, I, I like that song from the police way back in, I think it's from the 70s or the 80s. And it's in the 80s. And it says, we are spirits in a material world. You are a spirit in a body of flesh. You need to know where you came from. You need to know who you are in Christ. You need to know that you are a spirit. You hear my body, my tongue brings something forth, but you hear my spirit speaking to you. You only get to know me when I speak to you, when I share my heart with you, when I share my thoughts with you. It's better to share your heart than your thoughts, right? <laughs> but sometimes, you know, the Bible says where your heart is full of, there your mouth will be overflown off, right? It comes out of your mouth. Sometimes you are a prophet of your own life. 
you can determine your life where it goes to. You can go down the hill, you can up, go up the hill. And it can be that your life is going down the hill, but if you be the prophet of your own life, you speak yourself up the hill. You speak yourself up the hill. You can look at your valley, you can look at your problems, it does not matter. If you speak the words, it can promote you to higher levels. The word of God, what is planted within you. Can you say, the word of God is planted in me. Something is planted in you at the moment when you choose for Jesus Christ. He came to live in you. He came to dwell in you. There's a seed planted in you. Now you have only a choice to provoke, to pursue that seed so that it can grow in your life. Or you can just leave it because you are too busy in life. I, you know, I was standing here and I was wondering. I said, God, what should I say now? Sometimes there's positions and situations in life. You don't know what God wants you to do. I was thinking it over because my heart, every time when I speak, is to provoke you to do better next time. I was a manager for over 20 years in, in businesses. And my job was to manage the people. But, I, you know, when they, when they look at my job description, I always told them, you know, I want to work for your company, it's fine. But I'm a manager that will coach the people. So I coach you and push you to do better than where you're at now. That is actually what a leader should do, right, in a, in a church. It, and while I heard something about, there's different kind of managers. And I talked with the apostle about it. How, how do you see a leader and how do you see a manager? I said, I was a coaching manager. So what I, I want to do in my job is making myself nullified. Because I want to learn everything what I learned, what I have in me. I want to put that in you so that you perform better, so that you do better. And you know what happens with me? You know I can just relax and go home. Because if you find the position where you need to be, you can excel. Say I can excel on the position where I need to be. But you can only come there by the being a prophet in your own life. You know, people look and search for a prophet and they see it's good. And I realized something when I was standing here. I realized sometimes I cannot bring those people in that promised land where I want to have them. Because the only one who can do that is Jesus. The only one who can improve you is the Holy Spirit. Right? And then I, I realized, oh God, wow. That is something. But what I can do for you is let you know that you are a prophet of your own life. I can provoke you to do better so that you can tap in to the anointing of the Spirit of God. That's what my heart is to learn you to do better, to learn you to excel, to learn you to become a man and woman of God. Because we look too much down on ourselves because of situations of life. You know what? I divorced once or twice, and my husband or my wife died, and I have this kind of prob problems in my life. In God's eyes, you are precious. You, listen, people of God, Jesus Christ died for you. You were paid. A high price was paid for your life. Somebody shed, Jesus, the Son of God, shed his blood for you. Can you say, it? he shed his blood for me. Say it again, he shed his blood for me. You need to know you are precious in the eyesight of God. Don't look down on yourself. If you're, not, if you're sad, if you're depressed, look up how Jesus looks at you. That's different. And even if people talk bad at you, or your wife or your husband talk bad at you, you see, God is talking good about me. God gives me the good feeling. It's not a person that can give me a good feeling. It's the Spirit of God that gives you the good feeling that can bring you on the right path. There's a, 
you know, I wanna, we, we spoke, Apostle and me were sitting on the, on the broadcast on Facebook, and there came this word across, preparation. Can we say preparation? Preparation is what I want to talk with you today. It's something powerful. Preparation. Can we say preparation? preparation. You've ever seen on, you know, on uh, the television, there's that program, and sometimes they, they have followed like preppers. You know what a prepper is? A prepper? You don't know what a prepper is? A prepper prepares himself for the downfall of the world that will be happening, and they have this, they, they dig this big chambers and they have this concrete there and they gather food and aggregators that have electricity so if there's like a nuclear war or fallout yeah what is it called they build, they build this but it's, they call themselves preppers they have all this kind of stuff prepared for if something happened with the world they go with the family in this shelter down in the ground they build it they put a lot of money in there and they're very sincere in it. You know, they have their shotguns ready, and they have all, and they have their food ready, and they have the water ready for the contamination so that they can maintain themselves for like between five to ten years under the ground. <laughs> well, look at these people. They have something where they're working for, and it's not even showing if it even will happen, right? Now, are you preparing for yourself? Are you prepping yourself? I'm not talking about the physical area, but I'm talking about the spiritual one. Are you prepping yourself? Look at your neighbor and say, are you prepping yourself? Listen, we are learned, there's two sides. In this world, there are two sides. The one is the side of, I want to consume. I want to just go to the restaurant and eat. I want to go to these drive throughs and have my food when I order it within a minute or two minutes and I have everything what I need. I have my drink, I have my food, I have everything. Everything was already prepared. I just need to drive there, pay and get it and eat. Now, if you go to a restaurant or you eat at home, there's two kind of people. The one who preps it and the one who eats it. Now, what is... <laughs> What is going before the one who makes the food? The person needs to have an idea. What, is gonna, what kind of dish are we going to make today? We have this list of ingredients. That's number one. Then they go to the store and buy the ingredients. Then they go home, wrap out all of the ingredients, and then they have the recipe and they start cooking and put this in the pot and that in the pot and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. The recipe needs to be right. Right? How long? It, give me an. Uh, give me. Give me some, some good cooks here. Give me a time. How long would it be? How long would it take to prepare a dish? Depends on what you. Five minutes to an hour. But if I count that you need to go to the store and you need to spend some money and you need to go home and you need to prep it. That's a long time. You know, I, I, love, I love Indonesian food. And I love Indonesian food. And if you prep Indonesian food, they will take two days sometimes to prep it. So then there's all these dishes, you know. And, you know, and I, I like to come in and sit down and just eat the food, right? But the thing is, if you look at the time spent before the food was ready, it could be an hour. It could be two hours could be a day and you eat it between 10 minutes and 30 minutes and it's gone where's the appreciation for that give a hand for the cooks <laughs> now spiritual is the same you know i'm prepping here for a word i was prepping probably a week sometimes a day sometimes a couple of hours it differs. Now you're sitting here in your restaurant and they're just serving you the dish. You can eat it quickly. <laughs> now, sometimes people, the man of God was talking about the prophet and the seer. Sometimes people want to have the giftings of God. Amen? Now, a gift of God 
is something that was already prepared and you just can give it to the other person. So the other person can just receive it and it didn't cost the person to receive it. His, his birthday, he's going to receive a lot of gifts today. <laughs> so he just, he says that he's just going to receive his gifts. God gave gifts to people. So why some people try to boast about the gift, what was given by the one who prepared it? We need to stop doing the nonsense. If you want a gift, some people just come to church, they want to receive their gift. Oh, come pastor, pray for me. Pastor, I have this problem. I have this issue. I have this situation. Please pray for me. So thank God, God is merciful and very gracious. And he will give it, right? Because God is a giver. His heart is giving. Say, God's heart is giving. And he's not complaining. But he just gives. But now, if you want this gift that operates within you, you know, God planted something within you. Now you can unlock the thing what is within you. Because God planted that in every person who come to faith, to belief. You, because you have faith and you have living faith. Amen. I'm talking to living faith here, right? <laughs> so there's faith and there's living faith. So now you are the one who makes it alive or you let it die. Say, I'm the one. You need to prep yourself that you can make your faith alive. And I'm going to talk about this. And probably it's not shared that often. And it's very difficult for me to prepare and even ex try to explain it. Please bear with me, okay? So we have two sides. The one who is prepping and the one who is receiving. We like instant gratification. Amen. Ha <laughs> ha. Bring up the cake. Apostle, if you're watching, bring up that uh, cheesecake. <laughs> he can prep it in the kitchen for an hour and needs to, you know, it takes time. Right? Now, there's instant gratification and preparation. That's two. Preparation takes time and effort. Instant gratification is you go through the drive through and you just receive what you ordered. I like to have a computer that runs smoothly. I want to have my phone to work always. You know, otherwise you're going to text, you're going to look at Facebook, blah, 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 blah. But the preparation behind the system that was built by the technology of it, my goodness. Ask Chris. It's, it's There's a lot of technology behind it in order for us to, for us just to use it. You know, my phone, I need a phone. We have instant gratification with the iPhone, with the, the Samsung and everything. You know, the tablets. Convenience, too much. Sometimes, you know, so much, sometimes it's so much that we miss to listen to God. Because we are bombarded with visual, audio, interactive, multimedia waves. What coming up and down to my phone, to my iPad, to my computer, to my brain, to my eyes, to my ears, to my feelings. We want to have instant gratification. You know what we need to do? We need to get burned off the instant gratification. We need to put that on the altar and just let the fire of God hit that stuff. Because if there's, it's like an, I would wonder if an, you know what an a EMP is? Electric magnetic pulse. If EMP is released, the light is out, your phone is dead, the computer is out, my microphone is not working, nothing is working what is electric or even your car will not ignite. Everything is off. We're back to the dark ages. Then you will be really need to be a light for yourself. <laughs> so then we need to, you see, then we need the prepper. Where's the preppers? Uh, is there a prepper here? <laughs> that is the thing. We need to be, pre pre be prepared. On which side are you? The fast consumer or the prepper? Preparation. You can prepare yourself in the spirit. You can come to church and be prepared in the spirit. You know, people complain, you know, this is not working in my life. My relation sucks. My job, my boss is so obnoxious. And every time I want to have, you know, in increase on my finances, it's not happening. We have all this kind of stuff going on. 
And then we come to church. Pastor, please pray for me. I know I'm going to have the quick release. God will give it. But God wants to learn something. Are you learning something today? Because that's the purpose. He wants us to learn to excel ourselves. If you do not learn, ah, come on. If you do not learn to prep spiritual for yourself, apostle is gone. Okay, I'm going to go also now. And Brian, you come with me. And we just leave you back. If you're back home alone, what will happen with your spiritual life? Are you prepped? Are you hooked in? Are you the prophet of your own life? Are you connected with the spirit of God yourself? The Spirit of God needs to be alive in yourself. You can do it. Say, I can do it. We have men and women of God that will help you to push and pull you into the direction where you need to go. That's why we're here. That's why I'm speaking. That's why we're praying. That's why we're helping. That's why God wants to release His anointing. But you need to tap in it, into it before it's too late. Prep. Prep yourself. See, I need to prep myself. <laughs> Elisha was following Elijah and he was prepping himself. Everybody said, no, what are you doing? He's going to die. Just leave him. Even the other prophets who were there, groups, big groups, the big group will always tell you, don't do it. Even the Christians will tell you, don't do it. And God spoke to you to follow that man or to follow. And everybody is laughing at you. They were laughing at Elisha. Look at him. You, what are you doing, man? You're following. He's going to die today. And he started following him. And the man of God told me, go away, man. I'm, you know, just go. No, no, no. I keep on following you. No, no, you just go. And then other people come. No, Joe, Joe. What are you doing, man? Go home. No, no, no. He said, I stick to you until God will bless me. Stick to God until God will bless you. Keep on pushing. Keep on holding. Stand fast. What is the apostle teaching about? Stand fast. Because then he will release that thing what you need. That problem will be solved. Just keep on standing. Keep on going. God wants you. You know. <laughs> we know all the, how to eat. But God wants you to learn how to cook. I cannot cook myself. I need to learn. I was, I was, I was, Chris, I was with Chris last night. You know, He was cooking, man. It was good. But I could eat it. <laughs> but God wants you to learn to cook. God wants you to learn to prep in the spirit realm. God wants you to be prepared so that you can move in the spiritual realm. We need to be released in that. You know, we want the gift. We want, oh my goodness, this is too much. Who wants the gift? Who wants a gift from God? Come on. Don't be shy. I want it. I'm, I'm the first one waving. But God is not looking at the gift. God is looking at the fruit. I say it again. The gift can be so awesome, so beautiful, so obnoxious, so attractive. But God will never look at the gift. He will look at your fruit. Say, so he looks at my fruit. The gift comes from the outside because you received it. The fruit comes from the inside because it needs to grow. The, the gift is fast. The fruit needs to grow. The gift is an anointing. And then there's the anointing inside. It needs to grow. And it can change your character. It can change your, your ways of doing. It can change your life. It can change your thoughts. You know, I had a lot of people in the Netherlands and probably it's only the stubborn Dutch one. You know, I was always being like this. You just need to take me like that. I was always, I was, you don't understand. My dad was like that. My granddad was like that. And I'm like this also. Just take me as I am. No. Not here, of course. Not in Canada, right? We need to see what God is doing. The gift is given by the cost of the giver. The fruit takes time. And you need to work it out. It costs you something. That's where it comes in. Because we don't like to hear it. You know, it costs me something. You want to have, have prophecies? You want to be a seer? You want to have the, 
the gifts of miracles, signs and wonders. You want to have being the teacher, the prophet. You want to have all this kind of stuff. It's good. Go for it. But you need to have fire and keep it burning all the time. Because if you don't have the fire keeping burning, you will be burned out. Now, what is not working in your life? My business, my finances, my relationship, my job. Now I have something for you. So if your flesh cannot make it happen for you in this life, who else can? Sometimes we are so struggling, we are so stubborn, we are so stuck in our flesh. We want to push it and we want to be angry. And we, are gonna, we, we even got agitated and irritated. And we couldn't accomplish what we wanted to have in our flesh. The answer is the spirit. Can we say the spirit? spirit. Listen. Everyone wants to have power in the world and as a believer, right? Because if you have power, you're the man. You're the woman. Because with the power of God, you can do everything. Now, who wants to pay the price for the power? Ah, oh, not me. I just want to have the give. I was just going to sit down and eat. Oh, my goodness. Are you still following me? All right. Now, Acts chapter 1. Verse 14. The disciples were together in the upper room. Say upper room. They were staying there for almost 10 days in a row. And they need to wait there until something would happen. But they were not only waiting. Listen what the Bible says. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication. They stick together. They were united. They were united in prayer and supplication. Say in prayer and supplication. There was something they did before the power could come. There was something they did before the Spirit of God could come. They were pushing themselves. They were intensity. They were intense. They were in say intense. Now let me ask you. There's different explanations for the word prayer. The first one we know is ask. Right? Ask. Ask, search, and knock. That spells ask. There's another one. There's another one that means desire. It means intensity. It means search God with intensity. Search Him with supplication. Search Him with all you have. You know, some people, it's funny, and we say like Christians, my God, I know you so long, why do I go through all these sufferings? Sometimes the only way to make you intense is when we suffer. Because that's the way we can sit on the floor, we broken down, we can cry, we can weep, we can even shout to God, help me! Intensity. Then you have the desire in you. You know, it's not bad sometimes that you suffer. Sometimes it just needs to happen so that this intensity can come out. So that you can shout out to God. It's the way it is. We need to get more desire in ourselves to yield to God before suffering comes. I tell you about preparing. You know, my life is going this and this. I did this and I invested all this money. It's not happening. I'm talking about myself also. I'm not only talking against you or before you. I'm talking about myself first. And then, oh yeah, God, forgive me. Where was my prayers in that time? Is it lost? No. You can still resurrect it by prayer. You can still resurrect it by faith. Because we have resurrection power in us. What can revive everything what was dead in the past. What was good. And we can revive it. Amen. Your seed is never lost. Your prayers were never lost. 
this centurion who was praying, he was a Roman soldier. He was one of the ones who killed Jesus. He was praying intense. And he gave alms for the poor. He had the combination. And God released. The angel came down for him. And his whole household got saved. Because he had, he was doing this on a regular basis. He was pushing himself forward. He wanted to be in the sight and in the... In God's neighborhood. He wants to be with God. You want to be with God? Who wants to be with God? It takes something. It costs you something. Listen. Hmm. Oh. Luke 11 verse 8. There was this person who came to his friend. And he was in need of things. And he was knocking on the door. And a friend looked out of the window. What do you want? I'm sleeping. My family is here. Just let us be. We are sleepy. He kept on knocking. I say unto you, though you will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his, I don't like that word, <laughs> In, of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. If you are persistent in your prayer, God will give you as many as you need. Say, God will give me as many as I need. I have to be persistent. That is the answer. It was uh, Acts 12 verse 5. You know what happened? Herod was after the Christians. He killed James. Man, my brother James, they killed him. They crucified him. And now they had Peter. They captured my friend Peter in jail. Something bad happened for the Christians to do something right. So they came together and they started praying for Peter. And when they start praying for Peter, and they were pressing, and they were pressing, and they were pressing, and it didn't stop until Peter knocked on the door. We need to be prepared. We need to prepare ourselves. Say preparation. The persistence prayer of those who came together saved Peter's life. It saved him out of the jail. It saved his life. Sometimes we don't know what we got when we pray. Ah, oh, you know, God just help me. God bless me. Yes, he will. But the prayer together has so much impact. Can so change so much. You know, if you look at those men and women of God, when do miracles happen? When do miracles happen? Why is the prophetic strong? Why with this man and woman of God alone? It is because of the perseverance of in per being in pursuit of God, being in pursuit of Jesus, so that Jesus can grow in yourself, so you can connect to his anointing. But it costs you. It costs you time. Because your flesh is too busy. You know what? You know, I don't have time to I don't have time for prayer. You know, if I need prayer, just come to the pastor, he will pray for me. But then don't complain if something bad happens to you during the week because you lacked prayer. Prayer builds yourself up in the faith. The more you pray, the more the Spirit of God will be in you. The more the Spirit of God is in you, the more you will pray. The one feeds the other. The more you poo, I don't think you want to hear this. So when I pray, the Spirit will grow in me. Now, the Bible says, this is awful for some people here. The Bible says, the spirit is the enemy of the flesh. 
So if I pray, the spirit in me will grow and my flesh will be dying. My desires will be dying. My lust will be dying. My, my, oh, my gatherings, what I have here on earth, it will be dying. God will bless you before, because God will bless you anyways. But the thing is, you want to be growing in the spirit realm, that's what it costs you. It, you will lose your flesh. You, will, you lose your desires in the flesh. And you will go and grow in the spirit realm. You will see, you will prophesy, and then God will release his blessing even more upon you. It's not that God doesn't want you to have stuff in the flesh. But he wants to have the right order first. Because how can he bless you with more if you're not spiritual grown up? How can he give you like a lot of gold bars? Ooh, I, everybody wants to have that. How can he give you a big car and a lot of, and a big company if you're not spiritual ripe enough, mature enough to carry what God wants to give to you? Hmm. The Bible says in Luke 11 verse 3. If then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. You know to give good gifts to your children. Your mom and dad knew to give good gifts to you. How much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? To those who desire it from him. To those where, who insists from God, bless me with your spirit. Let me walk in the power of God. Let me walk and expand your kingdom with your giftings. Can you still follow me? God will give when you ask. But the Bible says in James 4, 2, he said in the end of verse 2, he said, Yet you did not have because you did not ask. <sighs> Sometimes we don't have. And then we think, why didn't I have? You know, I asked him, I prayed. Okay, there was prayer, there was some words. But where you consistently pushing for it, was there an intensity, intensity in your heart where you're pursuing that what you wanted to have? Oh, sorry God, I just asked it and I thought you just want to give it to me. God is all, all wise and he will bless but if you, you know, ask, sometimes ask means back, to call for, to crave, to desire, to require. It's much more than we think what prayer is. But it's dangerous because if you use prayer, your flesh will die. It will cost you. So say it will cost me something. But if you see what's not working in your life and you try to do it with your flesh, if you want to have it working in your life, Lose your flesh and the spirit will resurrect what you want. David said, I will pay the price for what I offer to the Lord. They wanted to give, you know, King David came and he wanted to give offerings to God. And they said, you know what, you're the king. Here, here, here's all the stuff you can offer to God. And David said, no, 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 no. I'm not going to offer anything to God. Until it cost me myself. I want it to cost it myself. Why do we give offerings? So that you can bless. It's blessed. Yes. But God wants you to give offerings. Oh, to bless God himself. Right? That's why. And so if you bless him, he will bless you. What is the price? The price, what you need to pay is prayer. The time you give to him. You know, people complain. And when we look at the prayer evenings, even when we are here, it's not a lot of people. But when we come here, it's a lot of people who complain and need prayer. But you can prepare yourself. You can prepare yourself so that you're not coming into the problem. Problems will always come. We'll always be there. Poor people will always come. We'll always be there. But you can excel for yourself to bring yourself on another level. Say, so I need to excel by myself. My prayer kills my flesh. Just say, my prayer kills my flesh. But it stirs my spirit. Always when you talk with people, uh, can we meet? I'm too busy. 
I have no time. So you know time to pray? What would God, you know, God is merciful. But if I, would go, I was God and I would come to God, I would say, you know what, I don't have time now for you. Whoops. Uh, I'm, I'm, yeah, be lucky that I'm not God. <laughs> yeah, but you see, because you don't like to be treated like that. You don't like to be treated wrongly than people abusing or misusing your time or your finances or your resources. You would say, you know what? I kick you out now. Go. I don't need you. Right? God has all right to do that. But the thing is, that seed inside of you can only grow by prayer. But what happens if you don't pray? It starts fading. It starts fading. It starts fading. It starts fading. And then this little light of mine, I need to sing that song then. This little light of mine. Then it's really a little light. God doesn't want that to be a little light. Amen? Something needs to be stirred up in me. Sometimes we need help. You need to be stirring up yourself. The Bible speaks about stir up your spirit in yourself. Rise up people of power. Rise up with the eagle's wings. Amen. That you got strength in you. Amen. But most of the time we need the strength when nobody is there, right? When you're at home, alone, in your room, you're crying, you're desperate, and you have pain. Nobody sees you, you have nobody to talk to. There's always one where you can talk to. And that's Jesus, because Jesus is with you all the days of your life. To him you can talk. To him you can complain whatever you want. Because he hears you. He sees you. And he has the answer. Stir yourself up. What's your passion? We are so passionate about a lot of things. Hey, buddy billing. I need to exercise. Cars. I need to polish my car. Clean it. Drive fast. My money. We are getting excited about a lot, of, a lot of things. We're getting excited about the football team and the baseball team and the ice hockey team. That stirs us up. Now, how do you stir your spirit in you? How? You can do it. Say, I can do it. Say, I have the power. One is this, what I'm doing here. I remind you of it. Let's look at this one. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Paul talks to Timothy and he said, therefore, I remind you. Say remind. remind. Look at your neighbor and say, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. He says, I remind you, I put something in you when I was praying for you, a spiritual gift. And now I remind you to stir it up. The reminder steers it up. It brings fire in you so that you can pick it up. So if you have brothers or sisters around you, sometimes they talk not that nice to you because it hurts in your flesh. That's the good answer. That's what we need. Sometimes it needs to hurt in the flesh so that you make, have a desire to get rid of the flesh. Right? Then God can answer. Then God can help you. He can stir it up. You, that helps to create zeal. Look at your neighbor. And tell them, I create zeal in you. I stir up your spirit. If you like it or not. <laughs> oh, but just be kind to each other, okay? Just be lovely to each other. <laughs> it is motivation. You know, there was a man of God, Elisha. He kept on going until he had that what he wanted. Are you giving half up the way? Like, you know, I started it and now it dropped down. I cannot, I cannot keep on. It's too, it's too hard for me. It's too difficult for me. I'm telling you for prayer. Because prayer, you know, there's, there's a lot of religions in this world, right? There's four major ones. Hinduism, Islam, Buddhism, and Christians. I wonder who is praying the most. Muslims pray a lot. That's why they expand a lot. And they unite a lot. Christians need to take an example. 
because if you pray a lot, you will unite a lot and you will grow a lot. Not only for your personal desires, not only for your personal life, not only for your spiritual life, but for the kingdom of God. Amen. Elisha. <laughs> may, say, may God remember me. Elisha was following Elijah and he had the mantle. So the prophetic anointing came upon him. Now, there was a king. He remembered Elisha. Put this on the screen. 2 Kings chapter 3 verse 11. There was a king, Jehoshaphat. And he said, "There's a because almost all the prophets were dead and gone. Right? There were some prophet schools, but it was not standing out. There was one man who stood out, Elijah, but he was dead. He was dead. He was gone. So now this king said, but Jehoshaphat said, is there no prophet of the Lord here? That we may inquire of the Lord by him. So one of the servants of the king of Israel answered and said, Elisha, the son of Zaphat, is there, is here, who poured water on the hands of Elijah. He, he was remembered of pouring water on the... <laughs> Come on. He was remembered pouring water on the hands of the man of God by a king. Never give up serving. May God locate you. May God show you to a king. He was remembered by a king, he remembered there was a guy, there was a young man, and he was washing his hands. Let him come. You know why? He was prepared, and he followed the Spirit of God, and he wanted the double anointing coming upon his life. But it cost him something, because he left his work behind. He left everything that he had in, in life behind, and he pressed he pressed until he had that double anointing from the man of God. And the man of God was gone. And now he stood there. And everybody was watching him from far behind. The other prophets, yeah, they, had, they were right. Yeah, the man of God would die. But there was something, there was a shift. There was a shift coming in Elijah's life. Say there's coming a shift in my life. I can determine the shift in my life. If I am in pursuit. Pursuit is praying. Keep on doing it. Don't give up. Don't stop it. Whatever you do, whatever you long for, whatever you pray for, the breakthrough is coming your way. Say the breakthrough is coming my way. It's coming my way. Just be bold. It's coming my way. Don't stop praying what I'm praying. Just it's coming my way. Whew. May God, re may you be remembered by God. Cornelius was remembered by his alms. And he was remembered by his prayers. Elisha was remembered only by pouring water on the hands of the man of God. Shaka. Just say, let us say, God, may you remember me. Wow. Now, then Elisha is there. And what does happen? He said, the king, the king asked him, you know, come on, prophesy for me. Just prophesy for us. You need, what? Because he was pouring water on the hands of the man of God, a king called him. And now he needed to prophesy, not only to pray, he needed to prophesy for kings. Wow. God is seeing your work, what you are doing. God is seeing your work, what you're doing for your man and woman of God. He is seeing it. Just keep pursuing it and you will be revealed. God is showing up and he will do the things. Now, what does he say? Look at this. Elisha was not happy. I said, I don't want to see this man. I don't even want to talk to him. And let's, I don't even want to prophesy over him. He was not in the mood. See, not in the mood. Sometimes you come to church or you want to go to church and say, you know what? I'm not in the mood. I stay at home. 
you know what, pastor, you can talk what you want. Hans, you can say what you want. I'm not in the mood. I'm staying at home. Hmm, take that. <laughs> now, Elisha, he said, oh, man, are really going to prophesy for this man? I don't, actually, that's, that's just in the scripture before. You can look it up. Just read it yourself. Now, then he said, please bring me a musician. Oh, what? And then it happened. When the musician played, I was so happy that you played that, you know, that song again. Christiana singing is great worship, right? Give them a hand. Because what you, not, what you sometimes not understand, you're playing and you're practicing. They prepared for the songs, right? And, but you not understand because they prepare. It's like praying. And when they release it, anointing will come. I needed anointing. I was, thank God for the anointing coming now. I take it. And then he said, the, when the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon him and he could prophesy. We need to have the hand of God upon our lives. We have the hand of God in our lives. The seed is in our lives, but there's more to come if he puts the hand upon your life. But you need to do something. You, it costs you something. It costs you time. It costs you money. It costs you your effort. It costs you your pain. It costs you struggles. Sometimes it's very difficult to go and pray, right? And you're not in the mood. My husband was nasty to me. My wife was talking too much to me. Blah, 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 blah. It's too much, oh. TMI. <laughs> it was too much. And then you need, to, you need to stir yourself. Stay stir myself. And if you are alone, it's also sometimes difficult. Because if the quietness around you is too big, oh man, I'm telling you. I wish I heard some birds singing now. No, but then you put on the music. With music comes a breakthrough in the spirit realm and your spirit will be stirred inside of you. Your spirit will come alive. You say, I need to stir myself. Say, I need to stir myself. I need to make time. Oh, come on, that's a little time. Say it again. I need to make time. I need to make time to pray, to worship, to have contact with God so that I can grow in the spirit. Make time to prepare yourself before the time comes. Make time before you come to church. Make, you will receive your miracle before you come. I know it. You will be blessed before you come. The atmosphere is different when you pray before you come. Yeah, I don't have time, man. I, I need to work. What time is it? Okay, I need to go to work. It's good. Stay in the spirit and you take your blessing with you. Amen. Shall we stand up on our feet? Give Jesus a hand clap. Jesus. Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Just focus yourself for a moment on Jesus right now. And just pray and ask him to stir you up. I hope I could stir you up this morning. Father, I pray the words. Change the mind. Change the hearts. Impact the soul. Impact the bodies. Impact your lives. Stir them up to pray. Stir them up. Stir them up. The Bible says I can stir myself up. As I can enjoy and prep myself to looking at a good game. I can stir myself up to read the Bible. I can stir myself up to go and pray. Because when I know when I pray, the beginning is rough. The beginning is tough. But I know the result will come. Because God is a God that cannot lie. He is a God that cannot lie. If I pray, if I ask, he will answer. He will answer. Sometimes I don't like the answers. And he said, no, but that's also an answer. But thank you, Father, that you give me the power and the strength to carry your answer. Thank you, Lord, that you can change my heart. Thank you, Lord, that I can connect it more and more to your anointing, to your power, to your strength. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. To 
purchase your complete copy of this life-changing message or other messages from Apostle Everton Weeks, visit our online store at mlmi.org. That's mlmi.org. Or by phone at 1-250-763-2993. Come join us live, Kelowna, BC, Canada, or any of our church locations. And remember, life without purpose is just an experience.